Hey there, guys and geeks. Welcome to KWTV, Nightwise.com TV Live, the live show filled with stuff that geeks love. Every week we try to talk about one certain topic that geeks are interested in, tech to tinker with, uh, books that you want to read, music that you want to listen to, a podcast that's interesting, or even we will try to dive into the archive and pull something from the yay old days uh, of the annals of the internet uh, that is very interesting. I will show you. But today we are going to do just one of those things. We're going to dive into just one of those topics and we're going to talk about a little piece of technology that has been um, tickling my fancy as of late. As you know, I'm a Linux user. I'm a cross-platform geek. I just love to jump from operating system to operating system. And regardless of whatever I have in my hands, I want to do the stuff that I love. So if I use a Mac or a Windows machine or a Linux machine, I just want to have that continuum of technology following me around, allowing me to do whatever I want to get done and let technology work for me. And for the most days that has been dragging around multiple PCs. Yeah, like for example, I have a MacBook, I have a Windows PC, I have a Linux PC somewhere. And I have been juggling these devices back and forth from, uh, you know, from the days way beyond. I think I started doing all of this in 2005. And ever since I started with Linux, which was about, I think, 2006, I have always heard the uh, cry, this is going to be the year of the Linux desktop. Yeah, it's going to be the year of the Linux desktop. The Linux desktop is really going to make it this time and it's going to go mainstream. You know what? It never did. It never became mainstream and I have been distro hopping and platform hopping for years now going back and forth to Linux and using Linux and the desktop applications as a well daily driver. Uh, take a look at the website and the show um, how I make a living with Linux where I talk about how I use a Linux desktop as my daily driver for my own company. What I've learned over the years is that as much attention as the Linux desktop is getting from the Linux user side, from the other platforms, the general users, mom and pop, uncle, aunt, mom, uh, grandpa and stuff, they don't really know what Linux is, nor do they care. And this has been something that, you know, Linux geeks have been very, very vocal about. You know, that's kind of, we can't do that. That's not possible. Oh, we should have more attention to the Linux desktop. But we've come to a point where Basically, it doesn't matter anymore. Most of the applications have gone into the cloud and right now we have come to a point where it doesn't really matter what operating system you're using. I mean, we used to, here at this show, uh, devote a lot of attention to the fact that you would use this application across all operating systems and it had to slide across. Well, we've come to the point where operating systems have become a little irrelevant. You know, with the cloud coming, you just open up a browser and you do what you want to do. But still, sometimes you do want to use your Linux. You do want to have a, li a native system and you can. Uh, there are plenty of options. You can have a dedicated machine. You can dual boot your machine. You can use virtual um, machines. You know, there are all kinds of ways to incorporate your Linux into your daily workflow. And as of late with Windows 10, we got introduced to WSL or Windows Subsystem for Linux, which was kind of like a command line kernel of Linux existing in Windows. You could actually install it as an application. Interesting stuff. Of course, now you don't need a separate virtual machine anymore. You could just run Linux in the command line and it has been immensely popular. There was just one thing missing you couldn't run graphical applications. For that, you needed to run a full-scale VM and you needed to have an actual virtual machine running. Well, with uh, Windows 11 and WSL, that is no longer required. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We are going to talk about running graphical Windows, uh, running a graphical Windows, of course, but running graphical Linux applications on Windows using WSL, integrating both the graphical and the multimedia site into your operating system. Yes, my friends, we've come to the point where you don't actually need a virtual machine to run Linux in Windows. We're going to show you how. So let me take you to the tech 
you want to tinker with. And the tech that you want to tinker with, I've got it right in front of me. This is my, um, let me just show you here. Yep, this is my um, X1, Lenovo X1, gorgeous laptop, running Windows 11. Let me show you, here it is. And what I started to do today was tinker around with Ubuntu on Windows, or could I say in Windows, because that's basically what it is. So Windows Subsystem for Linux is the Windows kernel running inside your uh, Windows or is the Linux kernel running inside your Windows application. And with Windows 11, we've gotten a lot of fancy options where you can not only run a virtual machine, but that virtual machine is also integrated into your Windows Explorer. So your virtual Linux can integrate or interact with the files on your Windows machine. And as you can see here, vice versa. That's great. I mean, that's like, you know, this takes when you're using stuff like VirtualBox, this takes quite a bit of effort, but I can browse from the Windows Explorer right into my Linux machine and take a look at all the files that are there. Like, for example, um, the, the config files. I can edit a Linux config file in Windows, which is bizarre, but that's not what I wanted to show you today. The first thing you need to do is to get that Linux into your Windows. Sounds weird, doesn't it? But it works. So we're going to start out by installing um, WSL. And for, to do that, you need to go to the start menu and you need to hit the features, which takes you to turn Windows features on or off. And there are some important features that you need to have enabled before you start. And these are the ones that you need to take off. Virtual machine platform for Windows. Windows hypervisor platform, it's not required, but it helps. And of course, the most important one, Windows subsystem for Linux. So take these on, hit OK, and your Windows machine will probably ask you if you want to reboot. Once you've rebooted, it's time to install a Linux distro in Windows. And we do that using the command line. We'll do that here in PowerShell, which will launch as an administrator and then we will start from the windows command line in order to get it working now graphics won't be this great but you will be able to follow along let me just quickly get my notes here so installing wsl distributions is quite easy you can list whatever distribution you want to use you can download them from the store but it's much cooler to do it from the command line so let's do that by typing WSL space dash L dash O. And this will list all of the distributions that are on the internet and that you, that you can install right away. So you have Ubuntu, Debian, Kali, OpenSUSE, uh, older versions of Ubuntu, whatever you want to install. So we're going to do, let's say, a Kali Linux. And I can just quite easily go WSL dash dash uh, space dash 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 um, install space dash d space Kali Linux <clears throat> and as you can see it will install Kali Linux straight to my Windows installation from the command line takes a little while but it will install the latest version of Kali Linux that was distributed for Windows and it's the rolling distribution, so it will get continuous update. And boom, there you have it. So it's installing it, takes a little while, but it's not really long, and there you have it. Now you go like, okay, I've installed it, now what do I do? Well, quite simple, you want to run it. But before you do that, you might want to update your WSL as well, because running a Linux command line version of, um, of, of whatever distro <clears throat> you're installing is easy. But when you want to do the graphical uh, application thing, you might want to update your WSL as well. Very easy, WSL space dash dash update. And then it will look for updates of the WSL, of the Windows subsystem for Linux to make sure that you're running the latest version. So after installing your distro, 
uh, it will be automatically installed. So here it says everything is pretty fine. If you need automatic updates, you can set that as well, but we're just gonna leave it at that. Now we have taken everything here and everything is installed. And as you can see, I've got a little command line window here that has popped open. And this is actually the Windows terminal. You can find the new Windows terminal over at the Microsoft store. And this is the terminal that we're gonna use to interact with our virtual machine. So you can just go to the store and type the Windows terminal preview, uh, hit that in the search bar, hit open and it will install and you will get this very terminal that you can, you know, uh, make quite funky by messing around with the settings and messing around with the color schemes and messing around with all of the uh, special doodads. So you don't have a boring command line anymore. You've got like this fancy thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I will be able to run Kali Linux. I installed Kali Linux, so I'll just hit the arrow up here and here you see that I have different distros available. So let's see if I can, I had Kali Linux here and which one am I running? Ah, doing something wrong. I should have stayed here because I just installed Kali Linux and now it's not here. So let's see if I can find it yeah, I can just find it in the start menu. There you go, Kelly Linux, it's an app. I'll type on that and it will open up that very window again. Now this, believe it or not, is Kelly Linux. So what can I do? I can just, you know, check if it's really Kelly Linux. So I'll do a Linux command, ls. I'll do uh, another Linux command, top, there you go. I can do an update. So do apt, update, there you go. <clears throat> and there you go. Because it's a rolling release, I just updated the latest version and now I have everything rolling. So that's pretty cool. Now, for the next part, I've all I've shown you to install a distribution and you can just, you know, run command line apps like that. So it's not really hard, but with the new version of Kali, uh, sorry, of WSL, you can go just one step beyond. And to do that, I'll just open up my Ubuntu version here. Let me just show you where this is my Ubuntu distro and I kind of selected this using the pull down that I have here. And here you see all the distros that I installed. I can just actually open up. This is Debian. <laughs> this is Linux. Uh, this is uh, Ubuntu and this is Kali. So really weird stuff, but I can do this if I want to. So I've got my um, Ubuntu here. So let's show it some love and let's install a graphical application. So I'll go like sudo apt install. What, what, what are we going to install? Um, I don't know, uh, I gotta, gotta think of something, uh, Kate, which is a graphical, uh, editor. So I'll just hit in my password. It wants to install all kinds of dependencies. We'll just let it, it's pretty fast. And there you go. So it's installing Kate. Scrunchy, scrunchy, scrunchy putting it all in there. And I'll just have to fill the dead air with my talking. But you can install whatever uh, graphical user uh, application that you want. So whatever graphical uh, application takes your fancy, you can just install it into your Linux machine. Now, if you're using command line apps, it's fun. You know, you know install like RSSI or Tmux and you can just run them from the command line. That's fine, but we are here today to do a little bit uh, more than that by using a um, graphical application. So it's been installed. So we go back to the start menu and we enter the words Kate. And there you go. If I open that, there it is. I mean, the scaling is not ideal. I've got a high resolution screen here and obviously it has some trouble handling high DPI screens, but this is a graphical Linux application running in Windows. And I can just, you know, Let's, let's do some blasphemy. Just open up Edge here and go to, this is Edge natively running on Windows. And this is Kate 
running on Linux. And I'm just running a Linux and a Windows app side by side. I could actually run PowerPoint and uh, whatever Linux application I want to use side by side, but just, you know, moving the windows over into one or in, in one operating system. It's pretty amazing. But I've done some more fancy things before we came here because I thought like, you know, oh, graphical applications, Kate and stuff like that. That's fun. How about some multimedia stuff? Oh, I tried. So I installed myself some Clementine. I can run Windows. I can run Clementine on Windows. That's not a problem. But what if what if I could run the Linux version of Clementine in Windows? Because I do want to stream my favorite music. Now, running, uh, launching Clementine does take a bit. So it's not as fast as your native uh, Windows application. And it's not as fast as running it in, in Windows, of course. And if it wants to do what I wanted to do, Clementine should be showing up right now. And it is taking a little while, which is really annoying. Come on. This is a live show. So shit falls over. Stuff falls down. Let me see if I can run it that way. And you're going to see it's going to it's going to like launch it three times before it comes up. Let's just leave it rolling in the meantime. Oh, there it is. There it is. There is my Clementine. Now, check this out. Well, of course, it's Clementine's going to be launched like three times now. Just uh, multiple sessions of Clementine. So I'll go to Soma FM. Again, this is high, it, high DPI, so you won't be able to make out the details. But just trust me on this. I'll go to the Christmas Rocks streaming station. I'll just punch this. Let's see if it works. There you go. Absolutely terrible uh, music coming straight from a, a, Win, a Linux application running in Windows. So not only the graphical interface, but also the multimedia part has been completely integrated. And using that, you can do that using just a couple of simple commands like I listed and I will also mention them in the show notes. Now, I do want to say one thing before you might get an error that you might be able to have an issue when you want to start a graphical ap application that it says, hey, um, the kernel has not been upgraded to uh, WSL2. I'll put a link in the comments below how you can do that. It's just a straight install of a Windows package in your Windows 10 or 11 and then boom, Bob's your uncle and you'll be able to run graphical Windows applications uh, Linux applications with uh, multimedia support in Windows. Now, what are the um, what are the caveats? Well, the Windows subsystem for Linux doesn't have the entire access to the Windows kernel. So stuff like Wireshark and stuff doesn't really work. You won't be able to access all of the network fancy stuff, but you will be able to do just about anything you want to do. And the great part is that the file system of your Windows uh, machine and the file systems of your Linux machine are intertwined. You can just jump over and navigate over just uh, between one operating system and the other because they are so fully integrated. In conclusion, WSL for Linux has taken away for me the need to run a virtual machine to run command line applications. It has taken away the need for me to SSH into some Raspberry Pi that I have running around. I just have my Linux command line apps right with me in Windows. Uh, quite performant actually, and they are very seamlessly integrated with the file system that I have. WSL2, however, has enabled me to, you know, kind of merge my worlds together, do what I really love to do and bring some Linux apps and Windows platforms together. So right now, if I want to slide from operating to system to operating system, I can, I can just, I can just use that. I don't need a virtual machine anymore. I've got Linux running in Windows with WSL2. 
And that's it for this week. Uh, this was the little live tip that we have for you, the tech to tinker with. You might want to try that out. And if you have a tip, you can share it with us as well. You can just go to www.nightwise.com slash discord to hang out on our discord channel here, where, um, let me just show you, where's my chat button? <laughs> let me see here. I got it, where we have a chat room on Discord that you want to hang out with. And you can bring your own suggestions of uh, what you want to listen to or what you think is interesting or what you are reading or listening to or watching or the tech you're tinkering with or maybe even the archive pick that you have for us. You can be a part of the show. So until then, let technology work for you instead of the other way around. Try out WSL2 for Windows on your Windows 10 or 11 machine using whatever distribution that tickles your fancy if it's available. Use the terminal preview and have a lot of fun. Let technology work for you. See you guys next time. Let me see which button I have to press again. And uh, well, have fun. <laughs>